Chair, dear colleagues, as announced, the topic of this paper is temperature among cases of neonatal sepsis and its association with mortality. In this session, we have been discussing uh, neonatal problems and the high mortality rates associated with these. This declaration, no conflicts of interest. And the first 28 days of life, the neonatal period is the most vulnerable in uh, human life, not only child life, but most uh, hum uh, human life. This is the most vulnerable period. The worldwide neonatal mortality rate fell by 47% between 1990 and 2015, from 36 to 19 deaths per uh, 1,000 live births. Over the same period, the number of newborn babies who died within the uh, first 28 days of life declined from 5.1 million to 2.7 million. This is a rosy picture, but <clears throat> the fact is that uh, the decline in neonatal mortality is slower in this period that we are talking about as compared with under five mortality. So there is a lot of work to be done that makes this uh, discussion all the more important. Of the estimated 5.9 million child deaths in 2015, almost one million <coughs> considerable occurred in the first day of life. That's the most crucial period and close to two million take place in the first week. So <clears throat> these figures show that uh, uh, it is important uh, to uh, discuss the neonatal problems if we are to uh, uh, um, uh, meet our goals to reduce uh, mortality rate uh, all around. Now, coming down to mortality among the neonates, uh, this pie diagram will uh, give us a picture that we can see that uh, neonatal infections, whether they are sepsis, meningitis, or pneumonia, in total, they make up almost one-third of all the uh, uh, horrible figures about neonatal mortality. So our paper is about neonatal sepsis, that one of the most important neonatal infections all around the world. How does it present? First, body temperature changes. Patient may present with hypothermia, may present with fever, or may, as we'll discuss later on, may present with a perfectly normal temperature, breathing problems, one of the commonest presentation, diarrhea, or decreased uh, bowel movements, low blood sugar, <clears throat> reduced sucking due to lethargy, uh, seizures, or uh, changes in the heart rate and vomiting. These are common manifestations of uh, neonatal sepsis. And sometimes, rather usually, it is a challenge to diagnose uh, which patient is uh, of neonatal sepsis and we can order uh, relevant investigations. Now, neonatal sepsis can present with perfectly normal temperature, and we'll discuss this point later on. It can present with decreased temperature, it can present with fever, and it may present with temperature instability, that is increase or decrease in rectal temperature by more than 1.5 degree Fahrenheit during three hours times. So in cases of neonatal sepsis can present uh, with either of these uh, four situations as far as their temperature is concerned. Neonatal hypothermia is a very common problem all around the world, but their prevalence, their incidence varies a lot. Uh, Community-based studies have shown different, in different countries the prevalence of hypothermia varies from 11% to even 92.3%. And hospital-based studies have shown that that was conducted in the hospitals that uh, prevalence of hypothermia was, uh, varies from 30 to uh, 85% of the cases admitted at that particular juncture in the hospital. The reason for uh, this variation in the prevalence can be uh, in which country the study was conducted, what was the weather, and what was the condition and traditional practices surrounding that new need. Now, a few words about the WHO classification of hypothermia that is important. Uh, normal temperature means uh, axillary temperature varying from 36.5 to 37.5. Mild hypothermia, <clears throat> 36 to 36.5 uh, degrees centigrade. Moderate hypothermia, 32, between 32 and 35.9 uh, degrees centigrade. And severe hypothermia means below 32 degrees centigrade. So this is the classification of uh, hypothermia that we are going to follow. Different factors can uh, uh, lead to increased prevalence of hypothermia. First 24 hours of life, that's the most vulnerable uh, period of life, even 
as far as uh, temperature stability is concerned. Low birth weight, prematures, these low birth weight and prematures are more vulnerable for obvious reasons to hypothermia. Those who are not breastfed, birth outside the hospital, early bathing practices, low APGAR score, multiple pregnancy, winter season for obvious reason, and uh, maternal hypothermia can also lead to hypothermia among the newborns. Objectives of this study, now we come to the study which we are going to discuss. First objective was to ascertain the prevalence of hypothermia on admission and different categories of hypothermia, how much prevalent they were among the cases of both probable and culture proven neonatal sepsis on admission. We are discussing on admission. To evaluate association of mortality rate with axillary temperature at admission. These were the two main objectives of our study. Now methods. All cases of probable and culture-proven neonatal sepsis admitted in NICU Fazli Umar Hospital, Rawa, Pakistan, from January to December 2013 were included in this study. We included both uh, probable and culture-proven sepsis cases in one year time. Neonatal sepsis was defined as the case of a neonate presenting with cl clinical signs and symptoms of neonatal sepsis with isolation of pathogen from either blood, CSF, or urine. Probable neonatal sepsis was defined as the case with clinical signs and symptoms of sepsis, but without any growth from any pathogen from any site, like blood, CSF, or urine, but with one or more of these criteria. Either the leukocyte count was more than 30,000, or it was below 5,000, or CRP was positive, uh, and uh, existence of predisposing factors like maternal fever, false swelling, lichens, or prolonged rupture of membrane was present then we labeled it as probable sepsis. Or in the first 24 hours of life, if the gastric polymorphic uh, leukocytes were more than uh, five uh, per high power field. Patients, now exclusion criteria was that patients with congenital heart diseases, congenital anomalies, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, metabolic disorders, respiratory distress syndrome were excluded from the studies. They were not included in this comparison that I'm going to present. A few, this slide shows the method to take auxiliary temperature of the neonate that we followed. And this slide shows uh, what investigations were conducted. Blood samples were taken for CBC, CRP levels, and blood culture at the time of admission, and urine samples for urine routine and culture. And if the clinical manifestations uh, of meningitis were pre present, lumbar puncture was conducted and CSF was examined, stomach aspirate was microscopically examined if the baby presented in the first 24 hours of life. Statistical analysis, SPSS 20 was used for statistical analysis. Chi-square test was used for testing association between categorical variables and Shapiro-Wilk test was applied to check normality. Now the results. <clears throat> Total number of 374 patients were included in the study. And uh, skin temperature uh, data was uh, showing non-normal distribution. And among these 374 uh, patients, 75.9% cases uh, fortunately were discharged, 11.5% left against medical advice, and 12.6% uh, suffered mortality, quite a high ratio. And 45.5% uh, uh, cases were having probable sepsis, and little above 50% cases were having culture-proven sepsis. Though ratio of probable and culture-proven sepsis was almost equal. Early onset cases, uh, were, uh, early onset sepsis was present in 54%, and late onset sepsis were present in 45.5%. Median axillary temperature was 36.66 and interquartile range was 0.77. Now, this is an important slide. It shows that majority of the cases of both probable and culture-proven cases had the normal temperature, that is 58%, 217 cases. Only 13.1% cases had temperature above those normal limits that uh, I have shown. Mild hypothermia, that is just between 36 and 36.5 percent, uh, it was present in 13.4 percent cases, and moderate hypothermia was present in 15.5 percent cases. 
Though our hospital took many uh, admissions from outside poor villages surrounding our area, but fortunately enough, none of the case had severe hypothermia. So in total, what we see that almost one third of the cases which were having probable or culture proven cases, they were suffering from hypothermia. And why it was important, I will show it in a moment. Now, this again, uh, this slide and when the chi-square test was applied, this was found out to be significant. This shows that, uh, relatively speaking, moderate hypothermia and mild hypothermia are associated with early onset sepsis. We can see the difference in the ratio. And relatively speaking, late onset sepsis cases suffer more increased temperature as compared with the cases of early onset sepsis. Now I come to the most important slide uh, that is showing the gist of this study. And this shows the mortality rate among different groups according to skin temperature on admission. Now, <laughs> we can see that those cases uh, who were having uh, normal temperature, their mortality rate was only 6.1%. Only 6.1% cases uh, with normal temperature on admission, with probable or culture proven cases, they uh, suffered mortality, they died. While this ratio increases to slightly to 11.6% cases among those cases who were having high temperature, that is above 37.5 degrees centigrade, and that is axillary temperature that I'm talking about. And uh, mild hypothermia cases, and uh, I have explained that uh, if the temperature is below 36, between 36 degrees centigrade and 36.5 degrees centigrade, it is mild hypothermia. We can say that this mortality rate has jumped to 32.6%, more than five times the ratio which is we are uh, seeing among the cases with normal temperature. And among the cases of mod, uh, moderate hypo, uh, hypothermia, this ratio almost remains the same, that is 33%. So, and chi-square test was highly significant. This shows that the, on admission, if hypothermia is present, then these children of uh, probable sepsis and culture-proven sepsis, they are more likely to suffer mortality and this uh, for difference between the ratio we are seeing on the slide. The debate upon whether the hypothermia is the result of the serious disease or whether this hypothermia is the cause of the mortality rate, this was not included in the parameter of our study. This will be carried on later on, but the association is very much clear from statistical analysis. Conclusions. Now conclusions are that majority of the cases of culture proven and probable neonatal sepsis have got normal axillary temperature. That is the first conclusion. Hypothermia is more common as compared with increased temperature. And we have seen the ratio. <clears throat> Severe hypothermia was not recorded in this study, at least that is below 32 degrees centigrade axillary temperature. Both mild and moderate hypothermia are associated with increased mortality and early onset uh, uh, neonatal sepsis is associated with hypothermia. Few words about the prevention of neonatal hypothermia, which is so dangerous, how to prevent it, all of us know. <coughs> Healthy term newborns uh, should be quickly dried after birth they should then be placed in a place that can readily be effectively kept warm. And even better choice is uh, of normal delivery is to quickly place the neonate on his or her mother's chest and cover both of them with light blanket. Skin to skin contact will warm the infant quickly and provide a new, neutral thermal environment and will promote bonding and early onset uh, feeding. This is effective in prematures as well. Now, this study is uh, one of the series of the study we are carrying on in our hospital, that is Fazlimar Hospital, Rabba, to recognize, to discover w what are the risk factors which are associated with increased mortality among the cases of neonatal sepsis. So I'm, I'll, as a discussion, I'll show some other studies also. 
This study was carried on in, our, in the same unit which shows that uh, neonatal, those cases of neonatal sepsis who have got glucose level below 40 milligram or above 200 milligram on admission, they suffer higher mortality rate. And this research paper was presented on South Asian Pediatric Congress, Colombo, Sri Lanka in 2009 by me and later on published in the Journal of College of Physician and Surgeon of Pakistan in 2012. And another uh, factor that is associated with increased mortality in the cases of neonatal sepsis is thrombocytopenia below uh, 150,000 platelet count. Uh, and they were associated with high mortality rate, uh, those cases of neonatal sepsis. And this study was presented in 14th Asia Pacific Congress of Pediatrics 2012 in Kuching, Malaysia. And later on, it was published in uh, JCPSP, a peer-reviewed journal. Then again, <clears throat> Uh, those cases of neonatal sepsis, uh, there's another study that was conducted in our unit, uh, who were having leukopenia that is uh, uh, below uh, 5,000 count, WBC count, or above 30,000, they suffered increased mortality as compared with those who were having normal WBC count. And this study was present, presented on 19, 9th International Congress of Tropical Pediatrics in Bangkok, Thailand, and was published in Pakistan Pediatric Journal, December 2014. So these, uh, this, uh, the present study that I'm presenting is uh, part of uh, those series of studies. That's all from me. Thank you for the patient hearing. If there are any questions, I'll be delighted.